So now just a quick bit of uh, a few words about the tricuspid valve. Uh, we've got three leaflets, anterior, posterior, and septal. Anterior leaflet biggest, posterior next biggest, septal the smallest. Uh, they're not monoplanar. The anterior leaflet is the highest. The posterior leaflet comes down and sort of spirals down to the septal. So when, by the time you get back down here, there's about a three to four millimeter step up to get back up to the anterior leaflet. So when you're sewing on a ring here, there's an actual little step that you've got to follow up if you're using a full ring. Conduction system is right nearby. We have the tendon of Tadero here running from the central fibrous body to the coronary sinus. And then uh, if you drop a vertical line down here, that causes you to have the triangle of coke. And inside the triangle coke is the AV node. And then as you go more and more anteriorly until you get within four or five millimeters of the end of this commissure here, you start having to carefully avoid the bundle of hiss, which is running right there and usually goes down just around the uh, membrane of septum that's right there. And then this is the left coronary, uh, this is the right coronary, non coronary commissure here. Now, the uh, tricuspid annulus does have some motion. The anterior part of it's laying right onto the aortic root. So when the aortic root's rocking and expanding, the tricuspid annulus gets a little bit of that, but it's only attached to it sort of peripherally. So that doesn't seem to play much role in tricuspid function. A lot of causes of tricuspid regurgitation, but far and away, number one is uh, in the setting of uh, mitral valve disease or aortic valve disease with some degree of right heart failure. That's that's our bread and butter, everyday repairs. Next would be um, any other cause, particularly elderly females who, some, who get just primary right ventricular failure out of nowhere and get isolated uh, mitral uh, tricuspid regurgitation, then endocarditis, carcinoid, pacemakers, and then there's another long list of collagen diseases and things. But the number one thing is 75% are the... Um, secondary uh, due to left heart disease. Now various techniques have been employed. This is a ring that tries to spare the conduction system, a rigid ring. Uh, this is the De Vega stitch, which is a stitch that's put around. Uh, and this is simply pinching off the valve and turning it into a bicuspid valve. And I'm just going to show you this because this is the K annuloplasty version of bicuspidization. That Posterior leaflet is ideal to placate out because the anterior leaflet's big. This curve here has lots of slack so you don't get stenosis. And this is, takes about three minutes. So if you've just finished doing an aortic valve, mitral valve, triple bypass, ascending aneurysm on an 80-year-old and you just want to fix their tricuspid valve, this takes about five minutes. So that's, it's, this is a technique you definitely want to have. It's not the ideal technique because it does not have as good durability but it's useful for that purpose. So this is what we use. We use that same ring we use on the mitral, and we just whip stitch it around the annulus. We only use two sizes. If the annulus looks really big, we use a 31. If it looks a little smaller, 29. Measuring the tricuspid annulus is still a huge problem for our echocardiographers. There's still a lot of papers being written about that. But if it looks about 40 or 45, then we use a 29, and then, and then we can... Eat. We put the strings on that side on these and we can adjust the strings. And that's what it ends up looking like. We use our testing mechanism over here with the pump. We put a retracted and compress the pulmonary artery and then we inflate that with the same insufflator four liters a minute and you can pop that up and make adjustments till you get a competent valve. Now, there was a big study from the STS published in 2013 and what it showed was that 86% of mitral valve, of tricuspid valve repairs uh, were reported as concomitant, most commonly with mitral surgery or mitral plus something. And 89% of the surgeries on the uh, tricuspid valve were repairs, reflecting the fact these are almost all simple annuloplasties. Now, it's been shown conclusively that adding a tricuspid repair to a mitral repair has no effect on mortality. But once you get away from that setting and you get into people that have come in with previous surgeries, uh, dialysis, heart failure, uh, and you're doing reoperations, the mortality climbs exponentially. So much so that we've got a group of cardiologists out there who simply won't refer these people in. And finally, when they're dying, they bring them into us to operate on, but it's sort of part of their culture that they don't send these complex repairs in till the end. 
And uh, you can see here, these are a few paper, representative papers from good centers. 13% mortality for tricuspid repair in this setting, 18%. And uh, Dr. Fred Moore, who's a famous German surgeon, 14%. So I just wanted to give you some thoughts on what we've done here to try to get a better outcome from our patients. And this is a group of people where you just got to accept you're going to have to put them in the hospital for a week to 10 days before surgery and work them over top to bottom uh, to evaluate everything and uh, diuresis and put them on milrinone if necessary, try to get the right heart working a little better and get them as tuned up as you possibly can. This is not routine elective tricuspids. These are these sick people with previous surgeries. But you have to just bite the bullet, put them in the hospital, and uh, make sure they don't have a big carcinoid in their tummy. So uh, my personal experience is uh, primary surgery, no reop, standard, straightforward tricuspid, 147, and then 76 others. And every one of these has been not so much fun. And uh, so if we look at the primary tricuspid, straightforward, prior cardiac, prior tricuspid, you can see that the... Uh, the most common thing we did was a ring annuloplasty followed by bicuspidization. So again, I say it, it's a useful thing to have, but it's not the thing to use on an elective uh, repair when you've got time. Uh, so if we look at the concurrent procedures, mostly cabs and, of course, 73% mitral valve repairs. And uh, you don't have to have a perfect result with the tricuspid valve. You do with the mitral valve. Our goal is zero MR as they leave the OR, and we keep working until we get zero MR on our testing. On the tricuspid valve, one plus just is transformational for these people. They get well and stay well, even with a little bit of leaks because of the low pressure. Uh, the primary tricuspid people are much healthier, lower PA pressures, uh, and the perioperative mortality is 3.4 for our, this group. But look at the mortality here with our policy of really working hard to get these people tuned up. We've made a significant impact on the perioperative mortality. So we've gone down quite a bit from the standard repair. So I really exhort you to pay close attention and just don't worry about what the hospital says or anything. Just put them in and get them tuned up. The ones that died in our experience are all pretty bad. They've had pretty extensive previous surgery. Uh, been in heart failure, most of them in heart failure, cirrhosis from their uh, cardiac cirrhosis, and they've got renal failure. So the goal is to get these people uh, to uh, get referred early. Uh, so we can say that elective tricuspid valve surgery carries a low risk in first-time setting, even in combined surgeries, mitral or aortic tricuspid or cab tricuspid. Risk of redo surgery declined due to some uh, multiple factors, some of which is us begging all our cardiologists to please let us see these people sooner. But the preoperative stabilization, which is in our hands, the patient's in, on our service in the hospital, and we're getting all the consultants to see him, I think is very important. And then the other thing is to uh, uh, just take maybe a little more aggressive attitude. I'm not saying that we should do a lot more uh, tricuspid valve repairs with mitral valve repair. If someone has significant... MR, I wouldn't agonize over whether it's moderate or moderately severe or severe or whether the annulus is 38 or 43. In general, these people recover better and do better in the long term if they've had their valve repaired. And if they've got right ventricular dysfunction or pulmonary artery uh, uh, hypertension pre-op, then I think that's a pretty good reason to go ahead and do it. Thank you. <laughs>